If you know lobsters, you know this one is not well. This is an animal that's in the late stages of disease, and you can see how slow it moves, how lethargic a, a healthy lobster would never sit in your hand. When marine ecologist Don Berenger was studying lobster density in the Caribbean, he found a lot of sick crustaceans. We ultimately discovered what turned out to be the first virus for any lobster in the world. This is a, an infected lobster, the, the reddish one here, and that's a non-infected. Oftentimes they'll take on this, this pinkish sort of cooked color. Infected animals stop molting, stop eating, and die. The spiny lobster is a staple of the seafood industry across the Caribbean. With help from the National Science Foundation, Behringer is trying to determine how this lethal PAV1 virus spreads. We know that it can spread via um, contact, and in the smallest juveniles can be transmitted just through the water column. The virus, which apparently does not harm humans, may be spreading another way. Lobsters spend six to eight months as larvae, often floating hundreds of miles in the open ocean. It's that larval stage that connects all of these places in the Caribbean, literally taking it from the adults and taking it right into the juveniles, which are the most susceptible population. All right, if you want to get the barrier set up, I'll get a lobster out. Lab tests reveal another curiosity. Lobsters may have disease detectors that keep some of them from getting sick. They can smell one another, they can smell food, and they can, we think they probably can smell disease as well. And they can do so before that diseased lobster becomes infectious to them. In this experiment at the University of Florida, one path has water from a tank with a sick animal, the other a healthy one. It appears that as we hypothesize, they are avoiding the scent of a, of a diseased lobster. Biologists are working closely with fishermen to ensure that fishing practices don't spread the disease. Our motivation is to make sure that what they're doing is sustainable for them, for the creature, for the ecosystem. Berenger hopes by learning more about this disease, it can be managed, and the population of these delicacies of the deep won't go into a tailspin. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.